YouTube, this is your boy Alex. I'm back with another YouTube video. Now, I talked to my um, my um, friends behind the scenes, and they told me two to three days is a little bit too much to take a break. If you take too long of a break, you guys might get bored, but I'm trying to give you guys a chance to watch other YouTube content creators, so I don't appear to be as selfish and self-centered. So, I'll do this video today, and then maybe a back-to-back, -back, and then maybe all of Wednesday and Thursday leading up to Friday, because I want to go back to the gym. That's probably when you're not going to get no videos until Sunday. Maybe Saturday or Sunday is when you'll probably get the next big video. I mean, because I thought about it last night, and I said I want to do one more or two more videos before I take the long break. So, that way you guys have some entertainment, but at the same time, you're free to watch other people. I don't want people to think that I'm holding them to just watch my channel. Watch all of us YouTubers, okay? Watch all of our YouTube content creators, you know? It's always good to watch me, but have a variety. It's like Baskin Robbins ice cream. Have multiple choices. You know, have alternatives, other ways of watching other people, not just me, because if you see me all the time, then it gets boring. It's like what Jim Carrey say. You do the same thing over and over and over again, it's going to get boring, gonna get stale so <laughs> we're gonna have to uh we're gonna have to break the comedy series in the four parts okay and it's gonna be a long series we're gonna do, i'm gonna do four categories of comedy all right part one is gonna be the black entertainers part two is gonna be black women who do comedy i'm gonna try to see if i can find some black women so that might take a, a long time to find so don't be stressing out and pulling your hair out and saying damn it alex you ain't made no video in two three four days what's going on gotta do the research i don't want to put the wrong names on the list and then someone go in the comment section and get on me for putting the wrong names on the list because it has happened four or five times in the past and then people confront me in person because you put the wrong names on the list then the third category is going to be the greatest comedians of all time, where that's going to be a mix of men and women. So if your favorites don't get on the first list, the second list, maybe the third list. And then the fourth category just might be, you know, you know, there's some white women who did some comedy too now. So we'll see how far I can stretch it out because there's going to be comedy in different categories. I think the fourth one is where I'm going to do the best animated comedy cartoons like Family Guy. Don't get too excited because I ain't got to the best animated comedy cartoon, so just hold your horses. I ain't got that far yet. All right, this video is going to be called Sex Game, the top 11 black greatest comedians of all times. We're talking about 11 of the greatest of all times. The ones that made you fall out of your seat. The ones that got you busting up laughing and you couldn't stop laughing. You couldn't finish your lunch. You couldn't finish your dinner. You went to sleep, you woke up laughing because it, what they said was just that funny. People who are actually very funny and very talented. Now, we don't just play basketball and football. We don't just do rap music, hip-hop. We also do other stuff. We, we write poetry, and we're good at telling jokes, and we're good at entertaining and making people laugh. Um, and we're good at putting smiles on people's faces because we're good at doing that. Now... First person at number 11 is Bill Bellamy. Now, Bill Bellamy got his rise to fame in the late 80s, early 1990s. He did pop up on two or three television shows. He did get small little roles, small little parts on um, the Wayne Brothers show because they were, um, they were um, that type of person who came in the game and dominated, like literally dominated. And he got a small part in there, but then it wasn't until he did Jeff da um, comedy Jeff Jam, where it featured a whole bunch of all star cast. He came in the period where he dominated, and next thing we know, we see him in a movie called um, How to Be a Player, which was his best performance because he made being funny while being good looking at the same time work for him. He and eventually got into a movie called Any Given Sunday what she was just there for comedy mischief, but we got to put him on a list because every time he does a movie, he can play himself. It's like you take a little bit of some Eddie Murphy, you take a little bit of some Martin Lawrence, you put it together and you get Bill Bellamy because he's been in the movies. 
You know, he's been in the lottery ticket. You know, he's been in um, what I would consider the sequel to How to Be a Player, where he was in that one movie with Vivica A. Fox. So he's had his moments where he's gotten people's attention, and he's best friends with Chris Tucker. So he's on this list because he's just funny. Like, that How to Be a Player movie is so funny because you can just imagine somebody in real life doing all the stuff you do in the movie. You can imagine somebody actually doing that. And I have some friends who actually does some of the stuff he does in the actual movie just for comedy mischief. Coming in at number 10 tied is Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey. I mean, you can't do a list without these guys, can you? I mean, I like Cedric the Entertainer a little bit more because he was always funny. I mean, no matter what you put him in, you put him in a comedy, a uh, romantic comedy, a uh, uh, an action thriller, a suspense thriller, you put him in a horror comedy, he can make you laugh so hard that you probably might run to the bathroom seven times. Like, he's that funny. Like, when you put him, like when he was in the movie called Street Kings, right? It was funny because the fact that they had him in the movie and he was arguing with Common, like, you can imagine somebody being, you know, terrified that they have to give up somebody, you know, and he did that movie, um, Johnson Family Vacation, where you got Vanessa Williams, you got, um, Bow Wow, you got Beyonce's sister in there, you got Steve Harvey, that was a good for family-oriented movie, Barbershop, Barbershop 2, Barbershop 3, you know, and he plays those characters very well, you know, he popped up on Eve's television show. You know, so he gets in the movies and the television shows. And he's been around for, like, two and a half decades. And now he's got his own television show where they made it where it's a neighbor. He walks outside. He don't like the neighbor. The neighbor don't like him. So it's finally good to see him finally get his television show. Took too long, but he got his own show. And one of his best portrayals is when he was in a movie called The Kings of Comedy. He got to be in there because he really is actually funny. Like, seriously, this guy can can hang with the best, okay? You talking about bringing it? He brings it. On the other hand, we got Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey is what I call the situation comedian. He takes life problems, life situations, and he makes them funny. Now, in recent times, he's been blacklisted because... You know, he say certain stuff that, you know, upset people. He wrote a book. Book got made into a movie. Made sequels. You seen the movie, Think Like Think Like a Man 1 and 2? Yeah, he, he wrote the book. Also, they get made in the movie. Now, which was kind of, kind of interesting, is that he took life situations and he made you laugh at him. So, he on the list for comedy, and basically that's it. I mean, I, one of his best, best movies is Love Don't Cost a Thing, because you got Nick Cannon in it. That's where you get to see some of his best comedian chops. Like, those are his best movies. Johnson Family Vacation. Those are, like, his best movies, because you get to see him at his best. Now, the Steve Harvey television show is where he was in the prime of his career. And you got to see him really shine in that television show. Of course, they eventually canceled it, but when he was in the prime of his career, Steve Harvey was funny. So, you got to have these two legends, these two icons on the list. It would not be funny if you did not have them on the list. Coming at number nine is Mike Epps. Mike Epps is very funny. I mean... Every movie you put him in, you could just imagine somebody doing the type of shit he do. Resident Evil Apocalypse. Yeah, I usually drive a Cadillac. You know, you can imagine somebody 